afternoon and welcome to Eswatini TV. This is your favorite tele-education program, Home Study. My name is Lirato Mabilisa. Also joining me in studio are our sign language interpreters, Linda Mamba and Tobile Fagute, and later on, my colleague, Nogwazi Lamini. Well, let me not waste time. Today, I will be giving you your timetable. Your timetable looks like this, grade sevens, form threes, and form fives. We have mathematics, followed by religious education, followed by English language, followed by mathematics, and the last subject is English language again. Do not forget that we have our social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook, where we are live from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So if you have missed any episodes, do not worry. We got you guys. You can simply go to our YouTube page. Well, I'll be back after this for your first lesson of the day. Let's take a quick infomercial. Gumelula kuti likiwane le corona lisuke kulomunye lingene kulomunye uma sita usonzelana. Singa sita singipise kuanza kwalo ngekuthi sikhweshelane. Loku kusho kuti singa chaulani, singa tinzani njengu kuhakana nje. Tikweshi isenge sika balese imita usuwa gulabanyi. Kumto kakakulu kusala uslobile nekuti uma uma ugewa pumela kubanvu. Nye kubambisana, sita kumisa kwanza wale likiwane, sipe ngulaba pilile. Eswa tini, sibambisene gulwa ne kwanza kwe le korona. Hi viewers at home, my name is Professor Shabang. I am the presenter for your favorite health program, Better Health, Better Life. Thank you viewers at home for the calls and the messages, and thank you Eswatin TV for the great platform. Better Health, Better Life Season 4 is coming bigger and better. And now you have a chance to participate by sending a video of your view prior to the next program. On that note, we are appealing to all Emaswati, please stay at home, Stop the spread so that we can save lives. Nine Bekunen, live as a swati in Iliati in Bazagania. Nem Kankaso will tigol a tempilo, Nam Shapsangene, E. Wealth Health Organization, Wagukti Natanda, Tisandigile, Naso Songes Cards, Kuvigela, Gulum Kusane, Locona, Wakorona virus. Tinne Inge, Tinzela, Long at the seven days, Kuti Vigela, Kulel Triwane, Le Corona virus. Inyato Leng Omega Gokuzi. We seven days and as a song as Katsi, cook as a tandla, a mandi la sobile, la hambago, pinze, or seven days in sipo, as a song as a cat. Utsatsi Sikati, lessing gang at twenty seconds, goya go forty seconds, solo utikes is a letanda, no mage, or seven days a sanitizer, nang abe a mandi ang echo to tani now. Litigo le tembilo liganye na mslabslangene li lulega kakulu siwe kuti silanze li nati tinyate lo guze kuti e, tanda tisale tikinegile tisobile nga sosonges kaz. Kumele umandise tanda taku nge mandi la hambago ushigishe insipo e tanda ni taku. Yenda sikinse guze kuti ushigisha totimbili tanda maloguwa nele. Sandla segula si shigishe ngetulu kwe sandla se sengele. Naso se sengele si shigishe sandla se segula. Uti sebendi se totimbili tanda kuze kuti ukezege gaase ngalogu pelele. 
ushikishe insipho emkhatsini weminwe yakho netandla totimbili uchubeke ushikishe ngemuva kweminwe yakho kuto totimbili tandla chubeka ushikishe titupa totimbili shengathi uyatishwila usebentise iminwe yakho lesondzelene shikisha sandla emkhatsini kubomake noma ke labo labanetingalo letinze kufanele bashikishe e, letingalo kuze kuthi emagciwane langabe ahleti khona e, nawo akhone kugezeka kahle ngalokuphelele uthi yakade tandla ngemanti lahambako tesule tome tandla ngethishu noma ke ngendwangu lehlobile Upinze usebentise ithishu noma indvangu kuvala impombi yenda siqiniseko sekuhlahla ithishu enzaweni lapho ingeke kubelula khona kutsi umuntu ayithinze nawe ungahlala unetandla letihlobile njalo njalo ngincusa onke maswati kutsi asukumele etulu sihlanganyele kulomkhankaso wekugcina tandla tihlandekile kuze kutsi sitawuvikela e, lesifo e, singasingeni kalula e, sisive e, siphindze sikhutsate bekunene kutsi nebantwana labancane e, basitakale basidwe ngilabadzala kutsi bagezisise tandla tabo tihlale tihlobile e, loko kube ngumsebenti wabo labadzala kuhlala bahlobise bantwana babagezisise tandla kuze kutsi kungabi lula uthi bantwana bangenwe ngulomkhuhlane we corona virus kuhloba kwami yimphilo yami siyabona Welcome back grade sevens. This is the first subject of the day and we are learning mathematics with Ms. Welile Lamini. And the topic for today is spreading property. Am I correct, ma'am? Yes, girl. Okay. A very good afternoon, ma'am. How are you today? Afternoon, Lerade. How are you, girl? I'm all right. I'm good too. Okay. Um, since today's topic is spreading property, what would you expect the viewer at home to have learned by the end of the lesson? Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Lena, at home. At the end of this lesson, you're expected to use the distributive property for addition and multiplication identify the basic operations that are associative you've already done the associative property illustrate the use of the grouping associative property of addition and also illustrate the use of grouping property of multiplication and that's all for today oh okay is there any specific material that um they'd need to use oh oh yes you're right Lerato. they're going to need their maths exercise books they should be ready with them of course they are writing materials and uh, um, their people's book the people's book only today not the workbook people's book and we're going to be looking at page 56 and 57. um okay ma'am without wasting any time please take the learner through yes before we go any further let us look at the rational learner at home why do we need to learn about spreading or distributive property of operations we got to be noting in our daily lives that we always go to the shops to buy so we need this learning of distributing or spreading whatever calculation that you are going to make in your shopping the vocabulary that we are going to be looking at more or using language the language that we're going to be using it are the two words spreading or distributing what does this two mean these two I use concurrently, they mean breaking down. We are going to be breaking numbers. We break down the numbers into smaller numbers so that we can be able to calculate them. For simpler calculation, we need to break the numbers into smaller numbers. What then is the spreading or distributive property? Let us look at the definition specifically. Whenever we are dealing with numbers, we do what we call expanding. We are going to be expanding these numbers to make them 
longer like making a sentence you break them down they are longer and smaller and in this case we're going to be using brackets the brackets are in connection with the multiplication operation for today's lesson we shall be using only two operations specifically addition and subtraction over multiplication take note we are going to be having only three operations today addition subtraction and these two are going to be used over addition and subtraction for our introduction today let us go back to knowing more about how do we use all the four operations that is using the order of operations the the four operations addition subtraction division and multiplication are going to be mixed together to form number sentences so in order for us to be able to work out the number sentence whenever we have more than one operation we use what we call the order of operations order of operations is divided into three levels these levels can be classified as follows we have the level one in level one In level one, we are going to be focusing on clearing the brackets. Look at the example there. 10 minus bracket 3 plus 5 and we close the brackets. Let us focus on the brackets only now. For now, we look at the brackets. We are saying our level one is supposed to be just clearing off the brackets. When we clear brackets, it means we are removing them, taking them out such that the number sentence is left without any brackets. So focusing on three plus five inside the brackets, we have to work out what is inside the brackets first. Working out what is inside the bracket first. Three plus five. Then the number sentence will change into 10 minus 8. We remember 3 plus 5 is 8. Then we bring back the division sign and we continue working it out. We move on to level 2. Let us look at level 2. Level 2 is when you are dealing with the two other operations. It is either division or multiplication. Either of the two not both of them at the same time they are at the same level which means they have their value is the same division is not of bigger priority than multiplication it means they are of the same value division is at the same value of multiplication we go to our examples we have a number sentence here starting with division sign then multiplication sign which one comes first we, whenever we have written such a number sentence, it means we're going to work out as it is. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Then we bring back the multiplication that follows. We multiply by 4 and we're going to get 16. Sorry about that. It is not 12, but it is, it is, it's not supposed to be 4 here. It's supposed to be 3 here. Let us correct it. Sorry about that. Let's correct this. Here, we are not supposed to have 4, but we are supposed to have 4, 4 times 3. There is no, there is no 3 here, which is going to give us 12. I hope we are together now. Then we move on to the next example. The next example has multiplication and division following which means we have to start working out the multiplication 9 times 10 which is 90 and then we bring back the division sign we divide by 5 and we get 18 that answer is not correct too let us correct it 90 divided by 5 Yes, it's there. Then we move on to level three. Level three is highlighted in red color now, which is the addition and the subtracting. We are going to be dealing more with the addition and the subtraction. And these are also at the same level. 
addition is not better than subtraction which means you take the number sentence as it is and work it out take the number sentence as it is and work it out five plus four is nine and then nine minus two is seven there we are and then we move on to the next example once again it starts with subtraction 11 minus 5 is equal to 6. Then 6 plus 8 is 14. There we are. We are done with our order of operations. We need to understand this clearly because as we move on, we are going to be using the order of operations for all the approaches that we are going to be using today. Let us use the spreading or distributive property to find area of rectangles in front of us we have a big triangle which has two colors the first big triangle the first triangle is blue and the other one is orange but this is going to be one tri one area we are going to find it in one uh, using one area we want to find out if the same rectangle can be divided into two the blue rectangle on its own plus the orange rectangle on its own let us do it here the area of this big one it is big and it is colored we are all noting that this one has got rows it has rows these are the rows one two three rows and here we write the three rows and we are going to multiply the three rows by columns the number of columns these are the number of columns hope we take note of that they are four remember we also have a smaller rectangle on the other side which also has one two three rows and we still have three here and this time we are going to be multiplying it by two why two two columns of the orange rectangle we are going to work that one out we are going to work it out this is how we shall work it out we are going to first deal with the brackets don't forget we have the brackets so we have to remove the brackets clear the brackets first which is going to be three times when we remove the brackets we have six four plus two is six and the answer becomes 18. then now let us take the big triangle and divide it into two into two smaller triangles the blue triangle on its own and add the smaller triangle which is orange now looking again at them and how are we going to distribute this? We've already expanded this rectangle. Sorry, it's not a triangle, it's a rectangle. We are going to expand this triangle now. The first rectangle here and the second rectangle is orange. Remember, we have three rows. There we are. One, two, three rows of the first rectangle. There we are. We write three. And we want to multiply those three rows by four columns we go one two three four columns there we are we multiply that and when we multiply that we're going to get 12. we move on to the smaller rectangle which has how many rows one two three there we are we have three rows times we multiply that by the two columns once again there we are Three times two will give us six. And what is our answer then for this one? Then we also get 18, which means whenever we want to work out a number sentence, we should make sure that once it is broken down or even the answer that you get after breaking down is the same as the answer that you get before breaking it down. That is why we are saying we have found area using the distributive or spreading property. As we can see, that three times bracket four plus two close bracket is equals to bracket three times four plus bra close brackets plus open brackets three 
times 2. We are going to get the same answers, which are 18. 18. Let us look at these approaches whenever we are given a number sentence, just a simple number sentence. The number sentence that we are looking at here is 7 times bracket 3 plus 3 plus 6. Let us make it clear like this. This is the first approach. Approach 1. We work it using the order of operations, which is going to be 7 times bracket 3 plus 6 as it is. We remove the brackets. Clear the brackets first. Clear brackets here. Clear. We do the clearing. Let us clear the brackets, which is 7 times 9. Remember, 3 plus 6 is 9. And we get 63. Now let us then spread this number sentence. Let us spread this number sentence. Approach 2 says we should spread this number sentence. Which means we are going to multiply 7 by 3 and also multiply 7 by 6. And then we are going to put that into brackets. And the addition sign, the addition sign here is going to come in between the two number sentences that we have. That is why we have 7 times 3 plus, plus 7 times 6. 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 6 times six, 7 times 6 is 42. And we also get 63. We were looking at the, multi -pro the distributive property of multiplication over sub, over addition. Now let us look at it whenever we're looking at subtraction, multiplication together with subtraction. The number sentence here that we are going to be using is nine times bracket five minus one. We are still going to use both approaches. The first approach using the order of operations and the second approach using the distributive property. There we are. Remember, we have to clear the brackets. Clear brackets. These are the brackets that we're supposed to clear. 5 minus 1 is 4. And then we bring back our 9 times. 9 times 4 is 36. We've done a subtraction here and here once again we are going to distribute this number sentence this number sentence is going to be distributed how then let us distribute it we are going to say nine times five this is nine times five minus and bring in the subtraction sign here and say nine times one once again we put those in brackets, then the subtraction sign in the middle. 9 times 5 is 45. Then we subtract. 9 times 1 is 9. Then we do the subtraction. And we still get the same answer, which is 36. Now, it is your turn, learner at home, to work out. I have two number sentences here that I am requiring you to take your time and you work them out. A, I have this number sentence for you to work out at home. 8 times bracket 20 plus 7. I suppose you are going to remember both approaches, the order of operation and the distributive. But I would encourage that you use the the distributive or spreading property, whereby you are going to spread this, num this number sentence, spread this number sentence into smaller numbers so that you work it out. And for B, once again, it is 8 times bracket 30 minus 3. 
and you close the bracket. Please try to use the spreading or distributive property and show your working clearly as you are going to be sending back your answers. I would very much appreciate if you can maybe take a photo of whatever you've done, of the working that you've done, but uh, it's all the same. You can all bring the answers. There is no problem. We shall then discuss them. Lerato, for me now, let us give the learner at home to do the two sums. I mean, the two number sentences that are supposed to work out. One is for the addition, multiplication over addition, and the other one is for multiplication over subtraction. Over to you, Susan. Okay, ma'am. Um, so you requiring a break, are you? Yes, please. Yes, please. We're just going to... I don't know how much time we'll have. Oh, how okay. much time we're going to give the learner at home so that they do it and get back to us. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we have to continue with the lesson. We have to continue with yes, the lesson. because there's not much time left. I think you can show the learner how to do it. But then one has the answer, which is 216. That's wonderful. 216. Yes, Any other one? No, a few just have 216. All of them? So a few, far? A few. So far? Yes, so okay. far. No one has a different answer? Uh, no. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, let us look at this table that has the answers. From the first one, which is a multiplication over addition, remember we said we distribute by saying 8 times 20, and we put that into brackets, and we then come back and say 8 times 7, we put that into brackets. 8 times 20 is 160. I hope, I hope you got that one. Then we add 8 times 7, which is 56. Definitely our answer is 116. I'm sorry, 216. And then we come back to the subtraction part. Does anyone have the answer? Or oh, they just sent the 216? Yes, they yes just the answers are the same. The answers are the same. The answers are the same. We distribute 8 times 30 minus... 8 times 3. We are subtracting this side, we were adding, and the other side we were subtracting. 8 times 30 is 240 minus 24, which also gives us 216. That's wonderful. Congratulations, Lena at home. I'm very happy that you are following. In conclusion, we should take note that whenever we are multiplication is distributive over addition and subtraction to make the numbers smaller so that it can be spread easily and you work out in smaller numbers and you should take note that whenever you are doing distributive or associative or grouping you make sure you go back to your order of operations know your order of operations the three levels that is clearing the brackets then working out the multiplication or the division then lastly it is the addition or the subtraction that would be done for your order of operations that way you are going to be able to distribute your multiplication either between the addition or over the addition or over the subtraction for more practice please refer to your books on page 56 up to page 57 and that will be done for you, Lena, at home. Thank you very much, Lerato. From me, it's done for the day. Well, thank you very much um, for joining us. Thank you to the viewer for watching. And thank you to those who are watching on YouTube. We see you guys. Do not worry. Up next is my colleague, Nogwazi Lamine, who is going to be presenting the next subject for Form 3 learners. So Form 3s do not go anywhere. We will be back after this infomercial. Wash, 
Wash your hands for 20 seconds, just like Elmo. Kids, wash your hands so you can come in and have lunch. Okay, Mom. Tabo, apply some soap. You shouldn't just use water only. But my hands aren't dirty, no loss. Just because your hands don't look dirty doesn't mean they're clean. We need to wash our hands regularly with soap and running water for at least 20 seconds, just like teacher taught us so that all virus causing germs and bacteria are washed away. Tabo, listen to your sister, baby. It's important to always wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Like right now before we eat, after using the toilet, after touching animals, or after changing a nappy. We must also clean our surfaces and toilet seats with disinfectant. Guys, I'm home. Welcome back, honey. This is your 1 p.m. news update brought to you by Victor Silombo. In the news today, we'll speak a little bit more about COVID-19, a disease that's infectious and causing problems all over the world. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by the coronavirus. The disease can spread from person to person through small droplets from the nose or mouth, which are spread when a person with COVID-19 coughs or exhales. Welcome back to our viewers and a very good afternoon if you have just joined us. My name is Noa Zidlamini and this is Home Study on Eswatini TV. Right now we are doing Form 3 Religious Education and the Form 3 teacher is already with me in the studio, Nomfundo Lamini. Also joining us in the studio are our sign language interpreters, Zanele Mota and Tobile Fagutze. Nomfundo, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, Nawazi. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. You have a wonderful smile, by the way. Oh, thank you, Koshi. I understand today that we're doing as the ascension of Jesus, right? Yes, yes, what are you expecting correct. your Form 3 learner at home to have learned by the end of this lesson? They would have learned how Jesus went up to heaven. Okay. Or ascended, actually. Yes, ascended. Yes, ascended. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for that, Stomfundo. Just to remind our viewers that we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. If you have any questions, please feel free to use those platforms. Nomfundo, uh, I'll let you begin your lesson. Uh, thank you, Nobazi. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, dear Lena, at home. Welcome to our RE lesson. As Nobazi had said, we are looking at the ascension of Jesus. Christ. You will remember that in our previous lesson, he resurrected from the dead and today he is uh, actually ascending to heaven. Uh, I hope your RSV Bibles are ready, your notebooks and pens of course, uh, since you are going to be taking notes. At the end of this lesson, you, uh, you should be able to give an account of Jesus' ascension. You should also be able to explain the significance of the ascension of Jesus Christ. Okay. You will remember, dear Lena, that uh, in our previous lesson, we saw how Jesus appeared to some of his disciples after his resurrection. You will remember uh, we said that uh, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene and the women that were with Mary Magdalene after his resurrection. You will also remember that uh, he, uh, he also appeared to Cleopas, uh, one of his disciples, Cleopas, and his companion on their road to Emmaus. 
you will remember we said that they walked talking about what had happened with Jesus Christ. This is the day in which Jesus Christ uh, had resurrected. So everyone was amazed by the fact that Jesus Christ had actually resurrected from the dead. Uh, they were amazed by, by what the women have reported to them. So Cleopas and his companion were off to Emmaus and then Jesus Christ joined them. But he made sure that they did not recognize who he was. You will remember that he joined them, he spoke to them and asked them what they were actually talking about. As somebody who doesn't even know what these people were talking about. And they wondered if uh, Jesus Christ was the only visitor in Jerusalem who did not know uh, the news about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Only to find out later... Uh, just before the journey ended, that it was actually Jesus Christ they were walking with. Okay, that was uh, his appearance on the road to Emmaus. You will also remember that we said he also appeared to Peter after that, when Cleopas and his companion went back to report to the disciples in Jerusalem, they found that Jesus Christ had already appeared to Peter and you will remember that we said when Peter when Peter saw Jesus Christ after his uh, when Peter learned that Jesus Christ had resurrected he ran to the place where Jesus Christ was buried and that is when he saw Jesus Christ himself and we also said that while his disciples had uh, gathered together in a locked room Jesus Christ also appeared to them in Jerusalem. While they were inside the locked room, Jesus Christ just, uh, mysteriously uh, appeared in that room which was locked. He appeared to his disciples uh, in the absence of one called Thomas who was not there when he appeared. And you will remember that we said that he reappeared in the same locked room and this time Thomas was there and he wanted proof that this was indeed Jesus Christ. You will remember we said that uh, Jesus showed him his hands where he was nailed. Also, we've seen Jesus appearing to his disciples at the uh, shore of the Sea of Tiberias while the disciples were fishing. We learned from the story that they, they had been fishing for the whole blessed night and caught no fish. And it was this time that Jesus appeared to them and instructed Peter to cast the net on the right hand side of the boat. And Peter did just as Jesus had said. And he caught as many fish as you can imagine. There was uh, another appearance. And also he appeared to his disciples in the mountain in Galilee. When Jesus Christ met with Mary Magdalene and the women, he instructed them to go to, the, this, to his uh, apostles and tell them to go to, Gal to the mountain in, in Galilee. And they did just as they were instructed. And here we saw Jesus Christ meeting them at the mountain in Galilee because Jesus Christ knew that they were going to be there as he had instructed them. To go there so he appeared to them here in galilee where he commissioned them to go out and preach now that he is gone he will be gone from them okay that is what we looked at in our previous lesson after the resurrection so today we are going to look at uh, the ascension of jesus christ before jesus christ ascended to heaven he met with his disciples in the mountain in in galilee and he said uh, very important things to to them let us look at what jesus said to his uh, disciples before he ascended to heaven this is taken from the book of luke chapter 24 verse 44 to 49 okay so when while he was speaking to them he reminded them of how he spoke to them about the prophecies uh, made 
about him in the Old Testament, which needed to be fulfilled. Specifically, he talked about the prophecies, what Moses had said about him, what was prophesied about him in the book of Psalms, and what other prophets had said about, about him. He reminded them that that needed to be fulfilled, that the Son of Man should, will be crucified, killed, and then rise to life. That needed to be fulfilled. After reminding them about uh, the prophecies, Jesus Christ then opened their minds to understand scripture. He opened their minds to understand scripture. That tells us that their spiritual eyes were now opened. They could understand the scripture more clearly than what they did, than they did before. These were Jews. They were used to reading scripture. Like they would read scripture every uh, service in the synagogue. But they didn't have that spiritual understanding of that scripture. So they will just read like uh, when you guys read novels or any other book that you read without full understanding. So after Jesus Christ had opened their spiritual minds, it was only then that they understood what Jesus Christ meant, when uh, what the scripture the scriptures meant about uh, all the prophecies that were made about Jesus Christ. So when their spiritual minds were opened, then Jesus Christ reminded them of what is written uh, about him. It is written that the Christ shall suffer and on the dead day rise from the dead. This was not the first time they were hearing this. They had been reading this, I don't know how, for how many times, but they could not understand this. But on this day, when their spiritual minds were opened, then Jesus Christ reminded them that the Christ, it was written that the Christ shall suffer and on the dead day rise from the dead to give them a full understanding of that scripture. After they had understood the scripture, he commissioned them again. He said, the repentance uh, uh, and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations starting from Jerusalem where they were. So they had to start from where they were to preach the gospel of repentance and forgiveness of since that was uh, an instruction that Jesus Christ was giving to his disciples before he ascended to to heaven they should go out and preach the repentance and forgiveness of sins okay and then he made this promise to them he sent them the promise of the lord which is obviously the holy spirit So he sent them the promise of the Holy Spirit. That was a, a gift that Jesus Christ was going to leave his disciples with to carry out the instruction that he had given to go out and preach the gospel to all nations, not only in Jerusalem where they were. So they needed to be clothed with the Holy Spirit so that they would be able to carry out this particular instruction. Okay. And then Jesus Christ urged them to stay in Jerusalem until they were clothed with power from on high. That power from the on high is the Holy Spirit that I was talking about. Remember, he said the preaching should start in Jerusalem. And these people here were in Jerusalem. So stay where you are so that the preaching starts from where you are. The Holy Spirit you are going to receive while you still you remain in the city. So their task was to remain in the city, Jerusalem, until they received the Holy Spirit. Then they will go to all nations as Jesus Christ had 
instructed them. So that was uh, the instructions that were given to the disciples before Jesus Christ ascended. Now, dear Lena, let's move on and look at the ascension itself. The ascension of Jesus Christ. This is found in the book of Luke also, chapter 24 as well, verse 50 to 53. So after saying all those things that Christ said to his disciples, he led them out. And remember, they were in the mountain in Galilee. So he led them out as far as Bethany. He led them out as far as Bethany, still speaking like he was with them in human form at that time. While he was speaking, he was seen lifting his hands and then he blessed them he lifted his hands and blessed them while he was still speaking blessing them he parted from them and he was carried up to heaven in full view of the apostles they were there with him listening to what he was saying to them and they saw him uh, being lifted, carried up, like uh, he, he just ignored the force of gravity. He did not let it bring him down. He just, uh, uh, he just, he, he just went up. So everyone saw him going up. After seeing all these wonders, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Note, dear Lena, that uh, Jesus Christ left his apostles but they returned with great joy why great joy now they had confidence in jesus christ now their understanding was different from what it was before now they understood better what was happening that is why they had great joy okay so they went back to jerusalem and they stayed in the temple continually blessing, praising God. That is what they, they did. They stayed in the temple, blessing God. They dedicated their time to God, stayed in the temple. And the temple was in Jerusalem. Remember, these people were given instructions to do what? To stay in Jerusalem. So they carried these instructions so well. I want us to look at uh, this picture of what uh, I was talking about. Here is uh, the disciples, uh, the apostles of Jesus Christ watching the Christ, the Messiah, being lifted up to heaven. This is Jesus. You can tell that already he is up, he is carried up. And the apostles are uh, in the picture. They are not even in sorrow or feeling hurt or uh, feeling any pain that he is departing from them. He is leaving them. They, are, they, they look so joyful in this picture. Remember, they went back with great joy because of their, of their understanding, the kind of understanding that they had at this Time. They marveled at the works of God that they were seeing through the ascension of Jesus Christ. I normally as, uh, emphasize the fact that Jesus Christ was lifted up to heaven because people tend to say that Jesus walked to heaven. He did not walk. You see in the picture, he is being lifted. He ascended. Okay. Why is this uh, ascension important why are you even learning about it the ascension of jesus christ uh, is important because it opened the spiritual eyes of the disciples of jesus christ the spiritual eyes of the apostles were were opened we learned we've learned uh before when he was while he was giving them the instructions that he opened their spiritual eyes so jesus could tell that because now i'm no longer going to be with these people let me just open their spiritual eyes so that they can see things that i won't be there to tell them also it uh, it drew enormous confidence 
from Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit. They went back to Jerusalem in great joy. They had so much confidence in the promise of the Holy Spirit. They went to stay in the temple as instructed, waiting for what? Waiting for the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ had promised them. So that shows the confidence that these uh, apostles gained in, uh, in the ascension of Jesus Christ. It is also important because uh, the apostles became evangelists after the ascension of Jesus Christ. It was during his uh, ascension that he left them with the instruction of going out to preach the gospel of uh, repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations. So in that way, they became evangelists, people who go out to preach the gospel of God to people. Also, the ascension is important because it presents Jesus Christ as a as the true Messiah. I I, I forgot uh, to do to, I, I forgot to mention that this story is also found in other gospels like the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Matthew, and the Gospel of Luke. Oh, I'm sorry, not Mark, jo uh, John. Uh, Mark says that uh, he was lifted up to be seated at the right hand of God. So we learn that uh, he is the true Messiah by the fact that he ascended to be seated at the right hand of God. We already know from our previous knowledge uh, that the Messiah is somewhere seated uh, on the right hand of God. So Mark recording that uh, Jesus Christ was lifted up to be seated at the right hand of God tells us that indeed Jesus Christ uh, was the, is the Messiah. Also, it marks the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. It marks the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. You will remember, dear Elena, how you have learned about the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, f from his uh, birth to uh, uh, up to now that he is ascending to heaven, uh, how he performed miracles, how he taught multitudes, uh, we, we remember that. So him ascending to heaven marks the end of his earthly ministry. It is done. What he had come for was done. He was done. He was going back to heaven where he belonged. It reminds, uh, the ascension reminds Christians that they have a crucial role in establishing the reign of God in people's heart. Now, after the ascension, Christians will learn that they have a role also to establish the reign, the kingdom of God to people's hearts. How? They will go out there and teach people about the kingdom of God. God. Make people accept Jesus Christ as their uh, Lord and Savior so that they are ready for the kingdom of God. It is a reminder that uh, Christians have a responsibility of preaching the gospel of repentance and forgiveness of sins. The instructions that Jesus Christ gave to his apostles apply even to the Christians of the 21st century. They should do likewise. They are also disciples of Jesus Christ. So if Jesus Christ had said that uh, his disciples should go out and preach, that means that even Christians today need to do what? Go out and preach the same gospel of repentance and forgiveness of sins. And also, uh, the ascension is important because it assures Christians that Jesus will one day return to judge the world. It had been said that uh, the, that is the second coming. This is the second coming. It is also known as the second coming of Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, uh, was lifted up to heaven and he said that he will return. He will come back. 
So Christians get the assurance that Jesus Christ will one day return because the apostles saw Jesus Christ ascending. So Christians are sure that Christ is alive. He is not dead. So definitely he will come back. So this will help Christians to stay alert, prepare themselves for the second coming of Christ, to be always on guard for the second coming of Christ. So they will always clear their paths because they know in their minds that Jesus Christ will return. He is alive. He rose from the dead and he was lifted up alive like I am standing before you today. Okay, so that uh, makes the ascension of Jesus Christ important even to Christians nowadays. Having said uh, that, I want us to look at this short uh, exercise that I have for you. You will remember in our previous lesson, I introduced to you a source-based question, how we answer a source-based question. Today's assessment too is uh, along those lines. Let us look at the first question. Give an account of the events in the source above. Give an account of the events in the source above. above. So you see in this question, you are not told what the event is. You are not told what the event the question is talking about is. But you have to study the source and then you will tell what is happening uh, in that event. Let's go back to uh, the picture that I showed to you earlier on. And we are going to use it as a source for our question. So if you are given a, a, a picture like this one here and you are told to uh, narrate or give an account of the events happening in the source, you simply study the source, look at what is happening in the source and then you will remember, oh, okay, here is Jesus Christ up in the clouds. He is ascending to heaven. So what uh, account are you going to give that of Jesus Christ ascending to heaven. What happened when Jesus Christ was ascending to heaven? So that is uh, how that is the account that you are going to to give. So maybe to just give you a clue, you will simply uh, write that uh, short paragraph uh, while Jesus Christ was talking to his uh, disciples, as we see the picture. While you are still talking to his uh, disciples, he lifted up his hands. You see in the picture, his hands are lifted and then he blessed them. That is what you have read about the ascension of Jesus Christ. You link that with what you see in the picture. So here is Jesus Christ uh, being lifted up. Uh, he lifted his hands and then he, he blessed them. You see that? That is how you answer a source-based question and then let's look at uh, the second question having studied the Persian narratives what conclusion can you draw about Jesus Christ having studied the Persian narratives what conclusion can you draw about Jesus Christ so you have seen Jesus Christ uh, entering Jerusalem, you have seen uh, how he was treated by the chief priests uh, and the leaders while he was in Jerusalem. You have seen Jesus Christ uh, being arrested. You have seen him being crucified. That should tell you something about Jesus Christ. What is it that you conclude? What is it that you learn about Jesus Christ from the Persian narratives? Uh, take note that the question is uh, uh, the question about uh, what you learn about Jesus Christ is just from the passion narratives. So here you involve all the narratives, okay? And then the last one is an evaluation, which we we have done so much. Do you think the ascension of Jesus has a 
positive influence on the way Christians live. Do you think the ascension of Jesus has a positive influence on the way Christians live? The Christians here are the Christians of this day. Do you think the way they live, uh, uh, the, the, the ascension of Jesus has a positive influence of, on them? Remember that in an evaluation, you give reasons for your answer and you also show that you have thought about different points of view. So that will be uh, an exercise that you are going to do for me at home. I think that uh, will bring us to the end of our lesson. We have looked at uh, the ascension of Jesus Christ and the significance of the ascension of Jesus Christ. Please remember not to uh, confuse the instruction part and the ascension part, okay? The ascension is strictly from verse 50 to verse 50 where Jesus Christ is actually being lifted up to heaven. That is the ascension. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Yes, Nawazi, uh, <laughs> this is the end of our lesson. Thank you very much, Nomfundo. We're looking forward to seeing you again, of course, for another RE lesson. Definitely. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day, by the way. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. From threes, please do not go anywhere. Up next, Lerato will be the will be with the from three English teacher Putumile Lamini. We'll be right back after this. Now, from the moment it was announced that there will be no sporting activities due to the ongoing COVID-19, we all felt that. But imagine how much work you can do in your house just using your chair. It could be anything you have in your house. Take a look at this. From my own chair, I'm able to exercise 30 minutes per day from biceps to triceps to my abs. But what are you waiting for? It is doable, it is possible. I'm able to do all the work. No matter how much time it will take me, I will stay active. Now, if you're a soccer player, an athlete, a gym instructor, anyone who loves exercising, use this time. It is doable in the house, in your own time. Stay safe. Together, we'll win this war. Imidlalo yonke imisiwe eve. Hlala ekhaya utivikele kulesifo i-COVID-19. Lokumcoka kutsi uhlale ekhaya, sitawudlala imidlalo hulumende sekazivumela. Kulesikhathi lapho khona umhlaba ula nemkhuhlane i-coronavirus, hulumende kwakulele ukucele wona emaswati kutsi akahlale ekhaya alandzela etimiso nemhambo yenhlangano yemhlaba bayo emhlabeni. Kanike ngabe mbukeli kutsi ngakala kutsi uphume uye ekhaya ngoma ke uye emsebentini. Hlala ukufaka i-face mask Kanike ngabe kubita kutu kwelele, kwelele la mkunweni. Sita wana na mbugeli, maibu ya tona temizalo, ngabe sita ulanze la tona, tingomota hulmende. Stay home, stay safe. Solo kutatu wakonawe kutu, shale kaya ulandegile ukeze tanja. Keep fit, stay home. Unga inga panje kuyo shala imisha. Shala utoge i face mask.
welcome back from threes this is the third subject for the day and we are learning english language with miss putumile lamini also joining me in studio are our sign language interpreters are our sign language interpreters zanele mota and nombumelele nombumelelo a very good afternoon ma'am good afternoon how are you i'm all right how are oh, you good thank you um so what are we learning today we're learning speaking exercises right yes today we are going to learn about speaking as a skill oh okay yes what would you expect the viewer at home to have learned by the end of the lesson in today's lesson i actually expect the learner to be able to understand the importance of the speaking skill and why we're supposed to develop it or practice it i also want to just introduce the learner to their oral assessment exam Oh, it sounds like it's going yes. to be an interesting lesson. Sure. Well, um, without wasting time, you may begin your lesson. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Lerato. So in today's lesson, like I have said, we are going to look into the skill of speaking. Just a quick reminder, we have four language skills. We have the reading skill, we have the listening skill, the speaking skill, and the writing skill. The reason why I am just mentioning all these skills today, you are going to see why all these skills are important for the learner to actually practice all of them or grasp all of them in order for the learner to be able to actually start to express their ideas and start to, and start to actually get to speak. You may ask yourself and say, why are we actually looking into speaking? Speaking is a daily activity. We actually speak every day. It is one way of language in which we are actually expressing our ideas. For instance, you share a joke with your friends, you express a thought with your friends, you uh, show someone directions, you engage in a debate. So all of these are parts and parcels of why we are supposed to actually get to understand speaking. So in most instances, when we are engaging in a, a speaking exercise, it is when we are actually in a conversation. That is, there is someone that we are speaking to. It can be an audience that you see. It can be an audience that you cannot see. Currently, right now, I am speaking to you, my dear Lena. I may not see you now, but in my head, I know that you are there. So I also know that whatsoever lesson or whatsoever idea that I am bringing forth to you, you are able to actually get to understand it and also comprehend it because um, as I am speaking, you are also in my mind. So in most instances, we engage in a conversation. Sometimes we also engage in a conversation with people from different um, uh, parts of life. Uh, for instance, uh, you may find yourself a uh, actually getting to speak with your friend as you speak with your friend the manner in which you are going to use language will not be the same when you speak with your friend you find that you are carefree you are chatty it is your friend that you are addressing but when you find that you are now speaking, let's say, to a supervisor or an, an employer, the way you are going to use language will also change. This is because that the more you use language, the more you practice the language, you will then know that I can use certain vocabulary items in this situation. I cannot use these vocabulary items in this situation. I want to make an example. Let's say when you are with your friends, you normally say, hey, my friend, what's up? You, that is the way you speak when you are with your friend. But when you are with your employer, or if you are looking for a job, you cannot walk into an interview and say, hey, what's up? Uh, I just, well, I'm just i looking for a job here and be carefree like that. So the more you practice language, it is also going to act as a guide in showing you that you can use language in this way. So be aware that we are always engaging in a conversation and we engage in a conversation in different situations. So when we practice the language, when we speak in the language, we also sensitize ourselves in the way we are going to use the language. Okay, so I also did highlight that when we speak, we are actually expressing our ideas. We are expressing our thoughts. We are expressing, expressing our opinions about a certain subject or a topic. It is very important, my learner, to have an opinion about something. In fact, your idea or your perception about something that is being shared or about something that everyone is feeling is very important. It is important for you to know what to say when something has happened. Let me make an example. We are now experiencing a 
a, a, a lockdown situation where everyone is locked in, in their houses. What is your opinion about that? What voice, uh, what, what, what can you say actually about that when you are trying to ensure that you are also expressing your opinion about something? Let's say maybe there is a friend of yours who is in a relationship. What is your opinion about that? So when we speak, we are also trying to show that we have an opinion about things that are happening around us. So before you speak, ensure that you are aware of what is happening around us. Because like I said, speaking happens daily. We are always speaking about uh, news or about things that are happening in our daily lives. We are always trying to share that, oh, my mother woke up in the wrong side of the bed today. And this is how I felt about it. So you are actually trying to express yourself in whatsoever it is that you are uh, trying to talk about. So, when you speak, it does not necessarily mean that you are uh, very knowledgeable about that topic. It does not mean that uh, every topic that you are going to speak about, you know everything about it. Which is why it is important that we share, we speak. Because the more we speak with other people, it's the more we are also going to learn. It's the more we are also going to say, I didn't know something about that. I normally say that it is in speeches, uh, it's, it's when you engage in a talk, it's when you engage in a discourse, when you get aha moments. Oh, I didn't know this existed. I didn't know that something like this was there. So speaking doesn't necessarily mean that no the topic in, in head but it just say express what are your thoughts about that topic at that you are speaking about okay so we like i said it is important that we practice it is important that you practice speaking in the english language uh, speak with your friends Make, make, it, make it a point or you can even make it a tradition that you are actually going to be speaking to your friend about how their day was, how the holiday was. You know, the more you speak with your friend or the more you try to engage your friend in a conversation, you will also find that you are also enlarging your vocabulary bank. In most instances, uh, what learners would say, maybe someone will be asking you, how was your day? It was nice and that's it but maybe if you are to be asked the same question within your mother tongue you will find that you are much more elaborate so if you are going to be practicing using the english language and you speak to your friends even in small matters you are going to uh, build your confidence and also enlarge your voc vocabulary bank and you must also understand this that there are certain skills like i talked about uh, them the other time meaning uh, the reading skill and the listening skill those skills are very important because the more you read is the more you are knowledgeable it's the more you see language at play is the more you actually find yourself hearing the different uh, bits of information you are adding more information you are also getting entertained so it is very important that you read and as you read you are going to peak information so like i said in our days we are having a, a lot of a discourses that have risen in our society read the newspapers find out what is being said uh, read through your internet find out what people are saying so that you develop a strong opinion about something i normally say that it is very important to engage in it in discourse or in a talk when you are actually knowledgeable about the topic at hand and you'll discover that even when you are in your speaking exercise or when you're doing your oral assessment when you have confidence in the knowledge at hand it is it's very easy for you to speak and to express your idea more uh, fluently. There are activities, however, that you find that we also do in class that help us to or that help to build our uh, speaking skill. Sometimes your teacher may ask you to do role plays. When you role play, it is when you play different characters in a different situation and you are trying to act out those characters by any it can be any reason why the chair is asking you to do that take this exercise very seriously because the more you role play is the more you will find yourself in different situations and you are going to find yourself using the language differently let me make an example your teacher may ask you to actually role play a scenario when there is an employer and an employee and you are going to be engaging in a talk so in that way 
way you are now going to understand that the way I'm going to use language them will be different. I am going to be a bit more respectful. I'm going to be straight to the point. I will not say I was disgusted about this, but maybe I will, I'm going to use words like uh, maybe this did, I, I was not comfortable when something happened in, in this way. So in that way, when you are role playing the different roles, you are actually also developing your language and understanding that we use language differently in different situations. Sometimes the chair may ask you to do classroom presentations. These are also very good because they require you to do a lot of research. That will involve a lot of reading. So when you're going to do presentations, and let's say maybe you're going to be presenting to your class about the effects of plastic surgery, which is one of the topics that is in our uh, Language for Life uh, book too. So you're going to now research and uh, read further so that when you are in front of your classmates, you are actually going to give an informative piece of a presentation they actually get to understand that oh these are the bad impacts of using plastic surgery it is also important to note that it is in presentations that you find yourself engaging more in your reading and also in your listening it is very important that you take this a uh, very seriously Sometimes you are also going to speak uh, with a small group. That is, you're going to form a group in your class and you're going to speak with your peers about a certain topic that your teacher has given you. This is very important because uh, in most instances, uh, most learners will feel like, oh, now we, have been, we are being put in a group. We, it is dreaded. Maybe let us share a bit of some stories. Try not to do that. Be fully involved in the task at hand. Because as you do that, the way you are going to express yourself or the way you are going to express your idea on the certain topic that you have, uh, you have been given will help you. Because you will discover that you may have looked at the topic from a different angle. And if you present that angle, you will discover that you are adding your opinion in that way. You are adding your idea in that way. So it is very important, my dear Lena, that you find yourself... Uh, developing or being part of a group sometimes we speak with our partners or we have pair work you are supposed to also use the certain uh, types of skills that i have talked about why is it important to practice a uh, speaking it will help develop to develop us you will also understand that speaking is very very important it is also important in your world of work because when you go to work your boss may want you to make presentations imagine writing an awesome presentation but failing to present it it just kills the whole thing so it is very important that you practice speaking so that you are able to also express your ideas fluently you are able to show that this is why i looked at this in this manner now we also need speaking because like i said there are going to be situations that will require you to speak your idea for instance let's say you are called in an interview you may know the the job and what is needed in that job but if you cannot express yourself fluently it will stand or it will pose a disadvantage to you so a skill of speaking is very integral to you my dear lena so what are the things that you are supposed to consider when you are uh, speaking? Accuracy. Accuracy here, it just means that you are able to variedly use your grammatical structures. That is, you are able to use a simple sentence. You are able to use a compound sentence. You are also able to use a complex sentence. You are also able to use a compound complex sentence. It is very important to master using these different structures for a specific effect. Sometimes you may discover that because you want to be more elaborate, you are going to maybe use a complex, a complex sentence. Uh, let me make an, a, an example. You may say that uh, because Miss P was sick, the lesson was not effective. So in that way, I have used a complex sentence. So it is very important, my dear Lena, that you are accurate. You use language accurately. You know that right now I am showing that this is an imperative statement. I am putting in a command. Stop doing this. My uh, Maybe you are doing a presentation. You are telling them, stop using drugs. It is an imperative statement. So you are now using a grammar accurately for it to achieve the specific effect that is intended by that type of uh, use. It is also important to use vocabulary efficiently. 
This entails that you use the appropriate vocabulary items tied with the situation presented. Let me make an example. You are going to be speaking about a soccer match. If you are speaking about a soccer match, there's going to be a football pitch. There's going to be spectators. There's going to be a midfielder. There's going to be a striker. So by understanding that I am now in this uh, type of situation, it means that I will now use the appropriate words that are tied with that situation. For instance, you are going to say that this person is a striker, this person is a midfielder, this person uh, maybe is a coach, this person maybe uh, is a referee. You are using the appropriate vocabulary item tied with that situation. You are not just going to say, and then there was a man chasing the ball. Oh no, you can't say that. That person has a role. So you are going to address that person with the role that they play to show that you are a person who is an avid reader. You have built in your vocabulary bank. So it is very important that you use vocabulary accurately. You ensure that if it is a classroom situation, there's going to be a student, there's going to be a teacher. You're not just going to say they were human beings. Oh no, you cannot do that. So it is important that in whatsoever whatsoever a discourse or in whatsoever talk that you are engaged in, you use the appropriate vocabulary. It is also important that you pronounce words correctly. Please note that we are aware that you are not a first speaker of the language, but through listening, through paying attention to details when you are listening, you are also going to understand that this is how a word is pronounced. So by doing that, by listening, you are also fixing your pronunciation. So you are now going to know that uh, I have to pronounce this word in this manner. It's because the more you are going to use the words correctly, you are not going to impair meaning. The person listening to you should understand that this is what you are saying. So it is important that we pronounce words correctly so what will help us in our pronunciation it is to listen when someone is pronouncing words it is to ensure that you also use a there's this app that is used in our days a, which is a dictionary app it also allows you to listen to how a word is pronounced so in that way it is helping you to develop your language through listening you'll be able to speak words and pronounce them correctly it is also important that you also develop your points. You, you are not just going to uh, answer like uh, yes, no. You cannot do that. You are not going to answer in one word statements. But be elaborate whenever you are given uh, uh, something which allows you to share your ideas. Uh, for instance, one will say, so what do you think about the state of lockdown? You cannot just say it is bad. And then you keep quiet. Oh, no, you can't do that. So what you need to do is that you now are going to be elaborate. Why do you think this is uncomfortable to you? Why are you saying that you do not like the situation that you are in right now? Build in your thoughts. Build in your idea by adding further details to the point that you have been asked a so that it is developed. A person gets to actually understand your complete thought about something. Also, you need, to, you need to be fluent. Fluent involves the ability to express your idea or thoughts with ease. That is, let's say maybe you are speaking about, I'm going to show you a card here about your hero. You are now going to think that this is maybe the way I want to actually uh, 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 structure my talk. I want to be fluent in it. I want the person listening to me to actually get to understand that this is what uh, I am saying about my hero. It doesn't mean that you're not going to make errors. You are going to make errors, but as you make errors, be, uh, be aware that they do not impair communication. They do not make your person or the person or your audience to guess that what was this person trying to say? What was he or she trying to actually express in this form of a thought? So it is important, my dear Lena, that we are accurate in our use of a language. We are also accurate in our use of vocabulary. We use vocabulary that is tied to the situation at hand. We pronounce words correctly. We develop our ideas. We develop We develop our thoughts. Uh, like I said, maybe you will say, I do not like this. Why don't you like it? Build in to that idea. Build into that thought that you have actually tried to articulate. So, 
why are we what are we supposed to know when we are speaking like i said we communicate ideas and opinions clearly accurately and effectively so it is when you talk about your thoughts correctly and clearly so if you are expressing your idea let's say maybe you are trying to be a persuasive you are trying to persuade someone to buy a certain product from you you need to be to be sure that you use the appropriate grammar that will or the appropriate words that will compel the person to actually buy your product so you make sure that you communicate clearly you express your ideas uh, uh, clearly your opinions are clearly expressed and you also develop your responses by using the appropriate linking words. For instance, show the person that maybe now I'm at a start uh, of my conversation. Now I'm going to, to finish my con conversation by using the appropriate linking devices. By showing that now this was a first idea. Maybe in conclusion, this is what I'm going to say. By that, the person following through your talk is able to follow your idea, is able to actually understand or to keep track with the talk. Like I said, use a, 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 a wide range of grammatical structures for effect. It is important that you use grammar uh, appropriately. Understand why am I using a simple sentence? Why am I using a compound sentence? What effect am I trying to have to the person who is listening to me? What is this person who is listening to me going to get the moment I use a simple sentence? You must also show control of a uh, pronunciation and intonation uh, patterns. Uh, let me make an example. You are now in a talk and in this talk, you are talking about something exciting. The way you are going to stress the language to show that this is a part in where it carries the excitement. It will show that now I am uh, trying to show a happy moment. You, you, are, you are not going to say, and we were happy. Oh, no, you can't say that. But you will be like, we were so happy, so elated. You have stressed. Your intonation is different to show that in this moment of your talk, you are raising or you are showing this part or this form of emotion. Also, engage in conversation and contribute effectively to help move the conversation forward. My dear Lena, take control of a conversation. Be part of the conversation. Be fully involved. And what will help you to be fully involved in a conversation? It is when you actually find yourself that you have read about a certain topic. It is when you find yourself that you have used the topic at length. And in that way, you are able to be a bit confident when it comes to the topic that you are going to be sharing. So it is important, my learners, that we understand the skill of speaking. We understand that it's a skill that is developed. We understand it's a skill that is practiced and we also understand that it is a skill that is being fed by other skills when we learn English. You will discover that in this skill you need to read, you need to listen and as you listen, as you read, you are able to now build in very good conversation skills, build in very good conversations because the person that you are engaging in a conversation with will find themselves to be very informed in it. Uh, so, all of what I'm talking about, it will actually lead you to where you are now going to be tested, which is normally called an oral assessment. I am not going to spend a lot of time here. Uh, in our next lesson, we are going to look into the oral access assessment in detail. But please note that before the oral assessment, we have been uh, previously developing ourselves. We have been engaging in classroom presentations. We have been engaging in role plays in our class. We have been speaking to our friends. So the more we do that, it's the more we actually get to develop the way we are using the language. So oral assessment, it is whereby they are now just going to be ass assessing the way you are able to converse. Are you able to speak fluently in the language? It is not an assessment that actually tests your knowledge about a topic, but it actually tests, are you able to express yourself? Are you able to express an idea about the topic that you have been given in, in, in that moment? It is a, an assessment that is in different stages. 
there's a stage whereby your teacher will actually now introduce uh, and give you the details of uh, of that test they will give you the instructions you are going to give them your name you are going to give them your examination number so it is in that place where you are actually uh, introduced to this is what is expected when you are doing your oral examinations they are telling you the rules and what you are supposed to do and what you are not supposed to do as you are engaging in the exam there is what is called the warm up stage it is this part of a uh, the the the, 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 sorry, it is this part of the assessment where you, the teacher is actually going to be asking you questions for purposes of making you to relax. I do not know, sometimes learners, when they're going for their oral assessment, they become nervous. So if you are in the warm-up session, this is where you are now going to be relaxing because they will be asking you familiar questions. It will not be graded. It is just ma meant to make you to actually uh, relax and to now start to understand that I am now inside or I am now I have now started engaging in an oral conversation. So the teacher will ask you questions for purposes to make uh, to, to make you a uh, uh, relax. It is also in that a uh, warm-up session where the teacher is going to also know the type of card that he or she will pick for you and there's this part which is very very important where you now read your card so this is the part uh, in which the teacher gives you the card they uh, pause the recording you go through the card it's very important to take this part seriously because as you go through the card it is the time where you are actually going to be asking your examiner or your teacher questions what does this mean what is it really what is required of me uh, to do maybe here in this conversation what does this word mean use that time profitably because when you actually get to understand your card you're actually uh, understanding your topic better it will boost your confidence because you will now start uh, making sure that you are able to express your ideas confidently you have a head support from your teacher you have head support that the things that you are thinking are actually appropriate and relevant with the card that you have so this part of your exam is also not graded but it is just a, and it's also not recorded it is meant for you to study your card and ask questions so that you also gain more confidence with what uh, with the card that you have then we have the speaking stage this is the part where you are actually now as, uh, going to be assessed or you're also going to be graded in this is when you are now going to be freely uh, expressing your thoughts about uh, the card that you have this part it is where you are now going to be engaging yourself in a conversation it is not an interview it is a conversation you may even initiate it as a learner so you are allowed to just share your thoughts freely be carefree and largely develop your ideas and maybe your teacher will pitch in here and there but it is not an interview you are just going to be uh, expressing yourself and showing your ideas fluently please be, be be aware that you are the one who is in control of this part of your exam because the more you talk you give more matter to the person who will be a uh, a grade in you to, to see that this person is able to develop uh, adequately he is a uh, he or she is able to use a uh, uh, varied structures of grammar he or she is able to uh, pronounce words correctly so the more you take charge of the conversation it is the more you'll find that you score very high marks it is also important like i said earlier that in this part of your your your, your, your exam or your test you are not assessed in how much do you know about that topic but the knowledge that you have about that topic also acts as a bonus because if you are more knowledgeable about that topic it means that you will speak freely in that topic which is why my dear Lena read listen be involved with the society be involved with the world because the more you are involved you will find yourself having an idea about any topic that they may want to pitch for you so be a reader be a listener which will act as a very as an advantage for you you are normally presented with the card like the one that i have here the card takes this format for instance in this format you are giving a card about my hero i'm just going to show it to you uh, it is in this way there are bullets you are analyzing you are able to ask as you study the card which will help boost your uh, conversation and it is very important to consider this that when you are going to be engaged in an oral examination relax do not be stressed unnecessarily.
Uh, I do not know what happens in most uh, in learners' minds. Some of them, you find that you are so uh, afraid. You are, it, maybe I don't know what makes you to be so afraid. But this is one exam in which you just need to go there relaxed. Clear any source of any sort of fear, any sort of confusion that you might you might you might have, because you are not going to be assessed on how much do you know about that topic, but you are going to be assessed on how well are you able to express your ideas, how well are you able to talk. Also, ask. You are given time to ask your teacher or your examiner. Ask them about that uh, that card that you have been given. Find out more information about it. And as you do that, as you study your card, order your thoughts. A good structured conversation is easy to follow. So order your thoughts. Know that I'm going to start with this point. I will follow with this one. I will follow with this one. This will make you to avoid certain mistakes. Also, speak naturally. You do not need to sound like a, a, a first language speaker, but ensure that you are natural as you are speaking and use time wisely. You are given allocated time, use that time wisely. So my dear Lena, I hope you were able to understand that this is a speaking skill. It is practiced. It is developed. All the other skills that we use in language, the more we exercise them, the more we read, the more we listen, the more we write, we will find ourselves being fluent in whatsoever it is that we speak. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Um, thank you very much, <laughs> Ms. Putumide. <laughs> that was a very interesting lesson, and I'm sure that the viewer um, at home enjoyed the lesson. Mm -hmm. Up next is my colleague, Nogwazi, who is going to be presenting the next from five subjects, mathematics and English language. So from fives, do not go anywhere. We will be back after this infomercial. Bonana, we are going to get the Okay, Maggie. Tabo seven days on seed. I'm going to seven days on the door. Tanja committed to Umshaba Musnovas. Which Tanja Takotik, the Umshaba Musho, which had gone to. Who made a Tanja City case and Charong and Zip on a man lamba was cut less than twenty seconds. Jangoba was fruits is a teach. Connock toys to a wound roll and a macuan and a wang out. Tabo. The little sister of the she, whom two were good and the Utikazing and see Pogan in a mandila so be the second less than Ganga twenty seconds. Mauto Gula, Maukat Sabu seven days of Umtoi, Maukat Sabu Sins at Dilan. No Maukat Sabu Shinjal Nabuin. Who made a footage and the Imitoi in a tens hour less good on a local Bula and Macuan. Sanbonani. So we live up. It's a long movie, just look. Lumshas Dovara banding a sea for COVID nineteen. COVID-19, sifo le sibangwa li kiwane le corona. Le sifo se njulu sega ngegutse ema ati la puma imlo nye nwa lo naso na kakoshle la noma kuluma awe le tinfen le tiglio nzao. Pese loyo lo nga naso, utinza leto tinfo nge tanja apinza tinze mesho impumulo nome umlom. Tinze la gatek nge pise matfuba egu tupole le sifo se COVID-19 noma egu sanzisa. Unga lanzela na tinyatelo. Keza tanja nge nsipo ne mandla shobile noma usebendise isanitizer. Simula noma ukwelelele nge kati kwe ngoza lo ikobile, nome usebendi sel pepa le kufinya. Lele upepa ubesa ululasha emkonyen. Kwe magutinza emetlo, impumulo, nemlomo nge tanja longa gati kezi. Kina sikala le singanga one meter emkati nwako na laba yebandu. Na tanjalo emandla shobile, uta ukinumti mba wako unglo shugumako. Mautiva ngata usiyo lo pilile, kumbe uya kwelela. We are Shisa, 
Nomu pefum lagalkun. Shaila in nombolo let's see. Nine seven seven. Kumbula. Shalau pepi. Shaleka. Nietzemba nieva was bust twice about sin worship. Kumkora kulu would slans the tongue let Nyatelo would testing at Holy, forty singer Sanzi silasi for the COVID nineteen. Futsi kumele sishale ekaya kuzis pepe ni eva gambe. Yebo babi. Welcome back to our viewers and a very good <coughs> afternoon. If you have just joined us, you are still tuned in to Eswatini TV and this is Home Study. My name is Noa Zihlamini and right now we are doing Mathematics 4 from 5 and already joining me is the Mathematics teacher 4 from 5, Lungelo Malinga. And of course, also joining us in the studio are our sign language interpreters, Linda Mamba and Tobile Fagudze. Lungelo, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm fine, Gwazi. How are you? You? I'm good, thank you very much. Today I got your name right. Ne? Yes, yes, <laughs> unlike the last time. Unlike the last time. Yes. I understand that today we're doing functions. Yes, today we are doing functions. What are you expecting your Form 5 learner to have learned by the end of this lesson? So, by the end of today's lesson, uh, I expect that the learner will be able to, one, identify functions. Uh, secondly, to find the inverse of a function which is uh, denoted by a to the power negative one, and then uh, to form composite functions, that is when you are combining different functions, and then to evaluate composite functions, and lastly, to be able to solve uh, problems involving functions. All right, thank you very much for that, Lungelo. From Fives, we hope that you are ready for your lesson. And just to remind you from Fives back at home that we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use those platforms and also our WhatsApp number. Lungelo, you may please begin your lesson. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, dear Lena, um, you may ask yourself as to why are functions important. So functions are useful in, in uh, one predicting uh, results of two related variables, such as um, the total of electricity, electricity bill when the consumption increases. So also uh, the possible grade you could get in mathematics when you have studied. So it has to do, deal, it deals with uh, two different um, variables. So we have already talked about uh, the objectives and then um, this is what we expect the learner to know. This is what we'll, we will apply. Uh, firstly, changing the subject of a formula, which is what we have been doing since Form 2. Uh, simplifying algebraic expressions, uh, factorizing quadratic expressions. You may use any of the methods. You may use um, uh, factorizing. You may use uh, completing a square. You may use the quadratic uh, equation. And lastly, uh, solving quadratic equations. And then um, functions, the, these are expressions that, um, that represent a special relation where every member of the input set, uh, which is also called the domain, is mapped onto exactly one member of the output set, which is also known as the range. So domain values, we also call them X values or input values. And then range, these are the set of Y values or output values so here are the types of functions that uh, we have on our syllabus we have got linear functions which are basically a straight line and then we have got quadratic functions these ones uh, this is how we can identify them when the highest power or the highest exponent of x is 2 then you will see that this one is quadratic and the, the, the graph that you'll get is a parabola, the U-shaped or N-shaped um, uh, graph. So the other type, it's the exponential function. This is when X is an exponent. For example, uh, 5 to the power X. F of X is equals to 5 to the power X. So this is, a lin this is an exponential function. X is a power. And then uh, the last one, it's the inverse power function. This is where x is a denominator. For example, uh, f of x is equals to, we'll continue underneath, um, 
5 over x plus 3. So this is an inverse uh, power function because x is a denominator. So that is how we are able to see the types of functions. And then uh, there are two ways that we use to, to test a function. Firstly, we may look at the coordinate. This one is called the coordinate test. So what you, what you, uh, in order to see that this is a function, all the ordered pairs, meaning all the, all the, all the coordinates that you have, all the points, they must have a unique domain value, meaning in each of the points, the x value, the one on the left, here is our x value, it must be unique. So the moment you find the x value repeated, then that means that is not n, that is not a, that is not a function. And then we then have the other type of um, a test. This one is called the vertical line test. So in the function, once you have thrown your function, you can throw vertical lines and then all the vertical lines or any of the vertical lines, they must cut the graph in only one point. We, we will look at this one. So here is our function. It is this straight line here. Our function is this straight line. And then we have got these vertical lines which are blue. These vertical lines are used for testing. Our function, it's the linear function, this one here. So this is our function. Now these two lines are for testing. So if you look at this vertical line, it has cut the, 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 the function here. It has cut it on only one point. And also here, it has cut it on only one point. Therefore, this is a function. And then the next one, if you look at uh, our function, it's the one that is in red. And then our testing lines are the vertical lines that are in blue. So if you look at this line, it has cut the function here. And then the very same line has also cut the function here, meaning it has cut the line twice. Yet we have said it must cut the line on only one point. Hence, we can say this is not a function. And then on our next one, we have got a parabolic uh, function here uh, in red. And then the vertical lines in blue are for testing. If you look at this vertical line, it has cut the function or the graph on this one point. And then here it has cut on this one point. And then here it has cut on one point. Hence, then we can say this is a function because one vertical line does not cut in more than one point. And then... Here, this is, a, 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 this is an exponential function. So our testing lines are the vertical lines in green. If we look at this one, it has cut the, the function once. And then also this one has cut the function once. So this also qualifies to be a function. And then, now let us start, uh, let us start solving. So given that uh, you are given these three functions, f of x is equals to, 4x minus 2, g of x is equals to 2x, 2 over x plus 1, and h of x is equals to x squared plus 3. So these are just names of our functions. So the f of x is just a name uh, for this function here. The g of x is a name for this function here. And then this is, so these, the letters are just names that are used to, to name the functions. So that we can be able, because um, as we have said, we have composite functions where we are dealing with more than one function. So instead of using the functions, we can just use these letters, the names. So here, when we are solving, we are, we are given the functions and then we are told that we must solve g of x. Solve when g of x is equals to 2. Meaning, we are looking for the x value or the input value when the output value is 0 0.2. So what we do in this instance is we take the whole function, the g of x, which is this function here, the 2 over x plus 1, and then we equate it to the 0 0.2, as we have done here. 2 over x plus 1, which is the g of x, the function, we equate it to 0 0.2. And then we then solve uh, balancing equations we can start by transposing the one here. So we subtract one on both sides. So when you subtract one, this side will be left with 0 0.8. Now we have 2 over x is equals to 0 0.8. So what you can then do is we then 
uh, multiplied by the x on both sides so multiplied by x multiplied by x and then we'll then be left with 2 is equals to 0 0.8 x remember we are looking for the x value or the input value when the output value is 0 0.2 so now uh, to, to finally find the value of x we then have to divide by the coefficient of x which in this case is negative 0 0.8 so divided by negative 0 0.8 on both sides divided by negative 0 0.8 and then uh, 2 divided by negative 0 0.8 it will give us negative 2.5 so our our input value our x value will be negative 2.5 if the output value is 0 0.2 we are still going to see as to how we evaluate now if the value is inside the brackets evaluate f of 2 we are still going to do this one so here it was just equating the whole function to the value that is given here to find the input value now going on to finding an inverse of a of a function so firstly uh, the inverse does the opposite job that was done that has been done by the function so we do not say when you are looking for the function uh, you reverse we are rather saying you are doing the opposite job that was done by the function so there are two ways of finding an inverse of a function firstly we can use the flow chart so the flow chart um, this is where you list all the steps that are taken to obtain the function so you are rewriting the function all over again and then at the end you reverse all the steps doing the opposite of the operations so here is an example so uh, as we were given the functions on our previous slide uh, here f of x is equals to 4x minus 2 so we are still going to use these functions so f of x is equals to 4x minus 2 using a flowchart to find its inverse we will start by rewriting the function all over again so you'll ask yourself the question that says what has been done to x the first step that was done to x so x was multiplied by 4 that was the first step so when you multiply x by 4 you will get 4x and then the next step so this is how we obtained the 4x we multiplied x by 4 and then the next step was to multi sorry to subtract 2 so that's our second step subtract 2 so when you subtract 2 from 4x you will then get 4x minus 2 that is our function now when you're doing the the inverse we will then start on the right hand side remember as we were rewriting the the function we started on the left hand side and went on to the right hand side now when we are doing the inverse we'll start on the right hand side and map our way back to the left hand side so we will then do the opposite of the operations remember the four operations addition its opposite is subtraction multiplication its opposite is division division and vice versa division its opposite is multiplication so the first thing now we start with the x on the right hand side and then we do the opposite of this step here so what's the opposite of subtracting 2 it is adding 2 so now on to x we add 2 on to x we add 2 so this will then be x plus 2 and then the next step was here to multiply by 4 and then what's the opposite of multiplying by 4 it is to divide by 4 so now what do we have we already have the x plus 2 we already have the x plus 2 let's erase everything we already have the x plus 2 now we have to divide by 4 so then divided by 4 will then yield us this result so this is now we have done the opposite of all the steps the first step was this one we have done its opposite the second step was this one we have done its opposite so now we have our inverse it is x plus 2 over 4 so that is how we find an inverse and remember an inverse here is the name of our function it's f of x so the inverse uh, to get the inverse what we do is we we we, we so sorry to name the, the the function f of x what we do is we, we then denote the f of x if it's the inverse we do not we denote it by the power negative one okay uh let let us go to guazi 
I'm I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but maybe please take a little bit of an infomercial break with your permission. Thank you. Viewers will be right back after this. Wash your hands with soap and running water frequently to prevent COVID-19. Avoid touching eyes, nose, mouth, shaking hands to prevent COVID-19. Are you coughing? Are you sneezing or having headaches? Make sure that you quickly, quickly go to the hospital. COVID-19, Corona. Welcome back to our viewers. You're still tuned in to Home Study and we are doing Form 5 Mathematics with Lungelo Malinga. Lungelo, I think I'll let you carry on with your lesson. Thank you very much, Wazi. Um, we, were, we were still saying uh, the inverse of a function is denoted by this uh, to the power negative 1. So the name of the function, as you can see, it's f of x. So now the inverse will then be f to the power negative 1 of x. So that means this means it's an inverse of the function f of x. So if it's the inverse of g of x, it's going to be g to the power negative 1 of x. So it's going to be like this if it's the inverse of uh, uh, the g of x. Now we have, we have um, seen how we, we find the inverse using the first method, which is the flow chart. Now let us move on to the second method, which is uh, finding the inverse algebraically so in in algebraic uh, method what we do is uh, we are told that find the inverse of um, g of x so as you can see that to the power negative one day that tells us that this is the inverse of the function g so what we do in in in, alge in algebraic method is we change from the function method uh, the g of x we change from that and then we substitute the g of x with y that is a that is writing it in in cartesian form when we use y instead of the name of the function so instead of g to the power negative one of x we'll then say y is equals to then we write the function so once we have changed once we have changed uh, from the inverse from the function method to the cartesian form we will then interchange or exchange the two values the x and y so as you can see the the the, the equation is now y is equals to 2 over x plus 1 y is equals to 2 over x plus 1 so what we then do on our second step is to interchange so we take y we will put it where there is x and then we take x we'll put it where there was y we exchange the two values so now it will then look like look like um, x is equals to 2 over y plus 1. x is equal to 2. So now the x has moved to where there was y. The y has moved to where there was x. And then, then we then change the subject of the formula, expressing it in terms of y. So to change the subject of the formula, uh, our first step would be 1 to transpose the, negative, the positive 1 
and make it negative 1. So this will then be x minus 1 is equals to 2 over y. And then the next step uh, will be to, to move this y here. We'll move this y by, by multiplying by the y on both sides. So when you multiply by y on both sides, uh, we will then have y is equals to x minus 1 is equals to 2. And then finally, to solve for y, we'll then divide by what is next to y, which is x minus 1 on both sides. So divide by x minus 1 on both sides. We will then have uh, y is equals to 2 over x minus 1. So that is our inverse. So it is still in Cartesian form, remember? So to take it back to the algebraic uh, notation, we'll then uh, go back to our g of x. So instead of the y, we then put back the name of the function, g uh, to the power negative 1 of x is equals to whatever we got here. So that is uh, finding the inverse algebraically. And then now, and then now moving on to um okay may, may we go to guazi again um i'm sorry can i just please take another break uh viewers at home we apologize for that but maybe please take a little bit another infomercial break, break actually we'll be right back after this Liki wanele korona li nganega kulu. Angege ulbone nge mesho enyama. Guze li pile liti nganguna matela kbantu. La liki wane li ngena melula empumlueni, emlonyeni, ganyi na semeshweni. Liki wanele korona aliketi. Li ngesuga giti tine banfana liye gubatali ganyi na butishele. Li senge suga gubo li tegiti. Injela ye guli misa le litwane. Guli vimba guti lusuga gulomunye liye gulomunye. Oma omonfu atumula noma akweshela. Le litwane li hamba ganye na lama tons la puma guloyo mungu. Oma otenta lapo atimulele noma akweshelele kona. Uya libuta le litwane. Oma ge utenta impumulo umlomo noma emesho. Livele linge neguwe. Gago ge, umtetu, umtetu wa kukala, umtetu lo mkulu. Geza tanja tako nge mandla kichimago na nge nsipo njalonja. Uma utimula, timulela engo seni yako. Uma italu fage imino mpumlueni. Tikweshi isegula banye bantu nge sika belesi imita. Gepa, lokusebenda ga ngono ga kulu, ushale kai. Uma se shala ema kaya, leli tuwane alikoni kuhama. E swatini, si bambise ne gulwa ne kwanza guli tuwane le korona. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one metre and quickly settle on surfaces. This is the reason person-to-person -person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known. So it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID-19. Hands touch many surfaces, which can be contaminated with the virus. You should therefore avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth, since contaminated hands can transfer the virus from the surface to yourself. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow, or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used, discard it immediately into a closed bin. The most effective way to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus is to clean your hands frequently with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This will eliminate the virus if it is on your hands. Stay healthy and prevent the spread of COVID-19.
Mbona ngulezi nkwasi imbuna yetempilo. Lamotla ni atube na kusata sivyo sikeze tanda ni mandi la shodile ni zilo. Noma ngini kuzi kwa mekona ni kani. Kuzi kwa tatako. Kuzi kwa kusika tatako kutikeza yonki zao. COVID-19, yes, the coronavirus. It is now our daily talk. It is now our everyday breaking news. I think it's high time we all come together and make sure we bring an end to this. Because we can't sit down while it's still taking over. Let's all follow all the precautions given by the health department so that we can protect ourselves and also protect others. I just wash my hands before I touch. I just close my mouth before I cough. And I just close my mouth before I sneeze. And now I'm go to parties, that's a risk, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I wash my hands before I touch. I see, I see, I close my mouth before I cough. I see, I see, I close my mouth before I sneeze. I see, I see, I don't go to parties, that's a risk. I see, I see, people going through a lot. I see, I see, coronavirus is a threat. I see, I see, I don't go to parties, that's a risk. I see, I see. I close my mouth before I cough. In case you're wondering, just wash your hands in case you handle things and then keep an eye. If you sneeze or cough, gotta keep it covered. I mean, who am I? Just a person living. Wanna see you living cause I value life. That's what you need. Raise up, we gon' fight and conquer cause we really got this. I see, I see. I wash my hands before I touch. I see, I see. I close my mouth before I cough. I see, I see. I close my mouth before I sneeze. I see, I see. I don't go to parties, that's a risk. I believe that some of the people you know can never be trusted at all. You gotta be cautious. Wash your hands more often, can trust everything that we touch. And when you sneeze, you gotta make sure you cover your mouth, but not with your hands. Cause you do not know who you gonna touch or what you have touched before all of that. Avoid meeting up with too many people for your own good and everyone else. You gotta make sure you keep it all clean. Watch how you maneuver, look after yourself. A hand sanitizer won't kill you. Make sure that you use running water. Just think of our brothers and sisters in the country and the ones that are outside the borders. Yeah. I see, I see. I wash my hands before I touch. I see, I see. I close my mouth before I cough. I see, I see. I close my mouth before I sneeze. I see, I see, I don't go to parties, that's a risk. Let's all come together and all say, not today, coronavirus. Welcome back to our viewers. We do apologize for that, but we will continue with our lesson right now. Lungelo, without wasting time, please continue with your lesson, please. Thank you very much, Was. Uh, let us now go on to composing the functions, uh, forming composite functions. So um, now this is where we are dealing with more than one function. So it's more or less multiplying the two functions, f and g of x. So what we can do here is to separate the two functions. The first one, we can call it the outer function. And then the second one, the g, we can call it the inner function. So now... What we do in such instances, fg of x, what we do is we take the whole inner function, the g of x, we substitute x in the outer function. So in this case, our outer function, it's f, and then our inner function, it's g. So here is g of x. Here is g of x. Um, it is um, 2 over x plus 1. And then here is f of x. It's 4x minus 2. So here in the outer function where there is x, we remove the x and then we put the whole inner function. So we'll put the 2 over x plus 1 where there is x. Hence, this will then be 4 into the whole, outer, the whole inner function, 2 over x plus 1. And then we continue with the, 
with the outer function minus 2. So this is the 4x minus 2. Now the x has been substituted by the inner function. So then we then uh, simplify that 4 times that this will be 8 over x plus 4. Uh, 4 times this uh, fraction it's 8 over x and then 4 times 1 it's 4 and then minus the 2 that was already outside. And then what we then do is to simplify or collect like terms. In this case, it's 4 minus 2. So 4, 4 minus 2 simplifies to 2. Hence, our function, our composite function, once we have combined them, it will be 8 over x plus 2. So that's how we compose. We take the, the inner function, the whole of the inner function, we put it where there is x in the outer function, and then we simplify. Now, let's go on to evaluating composite functions. So, we are still using the same functions, the f of x, g of x, and h of x. Now, they are saying find the value of h, f of 2. So, what you do in this instance, you, as you can see, let's go back to the previous one. Um, our, our, our composite functions, it was f, g of x. So, in brackets, we had x. So, we were simplifying. And now, in brackets, we, we are having a value meaning we are no longer simplifying, but we are rather evaluating. So what we do is, remember we start with the inner function, and the inner function in this case, it's the function of f, f of x. So we go to the inner function, the f of x, 4x minus 2. And then where there is x in the inner function, we put the value that is in brackets. So the 4x minus 2, this will be 4, and then in brackets, we put the, the 2 that is in brackets here, minus 2. So 4 times uh, that, it will be 8, minus 2, that will be 6. So when we evaluate the inner function only, when you evaluate the inner function only, we get 6. And then we now take the value that we have got after evaluating the inner function, and then we substitute that value in x of the outer function. So... Uh, in our outer function, remember our outer function, it is, um, our outer function, it's h. So in h here, where there is x, we are going to put the value that we got here, and the value is 6. So in x squared plus 3, where there is x, we put 6, so this will be 6 squared plus 3. So 6 squared, it's 36 plus 3, that will then be 39. So that is how we evaluate um, composite functions. Now, um show that f of x meaning this function uh, the function of f when you equate it to g of x it can be written in this format so as you can see uh, this is now a, a quadratic uh, equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero okay so how can we achieve this so take the whole function of f equate t, equate it to the whole function of g so Function f, it is 4 minus 2. So take that function and equate it to g, which is 2 over x plus 1, and then work it out or simplify. So the first thing we can do is to multiply all the terms by x. So when you multiply the, this side by x, this is what you'll get, x, and then in brackets, 4x minus 2. And then this side... Uh, the x here will cancel out and then 1 times x, it is x. So we'll then have, and then when you multiply now inside the brackets, 4 times x, it is 4x squared. And then uh, x times negative 2x, it is negative 2x is equals to what you have on the right hand side. And now we transpose what is on the right hand side, uh, we bring it to the left hand side. So we'll subtract the 2 and then we'll subtract the x and then we will then com, uh, collect like terms. So we will then have 4x uh, minus 2x minus x. As you can see, these are like terms, negative x, negative 2x, and negative x minus 2. And finally, negative 2x minus x, it is negative 3x. So finally, you will then have 4x squared minus 3x uh, minus 2 is equals to 0. So we have now... Uh, been able to express it in this format and next um, solve the, 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 the equation that uh, we form formulated the other side so you can use um, factorizing you can use uh, completing a square you can use the quadratic equation which is what we have here 
uh, and um, you can use group, uh, when factorizing remember to group the terms but um, in this case we decided to use uh, the quadratic equation so the quadratic equation remember it is x is equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided all divided by we don't only divide what is under the root sign but we divide everything by 2a and in this case remember the general equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero so in this case our b is negative three so negative b will be minus minus three which then tends to positive three and then e, under the root sign negative uh, b squared it's negative three squared which is nine uh, minus 4ac when you substitute uh, the value of a with 4 and then the value of c with 2 and then when you simplify that you will get 41 so the two roots will then be the first one will be where we take the plus so this will be 3 plus 41 over 8 which gives us um, 1.175 and then the other one will be 3 minus uh, 3 minus uh, root 41, this will give us negative 0 0.425. And then um, this is a way of seeing uh, the number of roots that you have to get uh, using this one. So what is under the, the root sign here, we call it the discriminant. So the b squared minus 4ac, it's called a discriminant. So this can help us to see the number of roots that we have. So if your discriminant is negative, like in this example, 2x squared uh, plus x plus 3. So when the discriminant is negative, then the number of roots will be 0. You won't have any roots. When you throw this graph, it won't cut the x-axis. And then this side, when um, the, 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 the discriminant is positive, we will have two roots. And then when the, when the discriminant is 0, we will have only one root. So this is uh, a way of checking uh, if you have done your calculations properly. So we are supposed to do uh, the inverse of composite functions. Uh, that was the only part that was remaining. So probably we'll continue on our next lesson. Please continue practicing DLNS. Uh, Gwazi, that was it from my side. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Lungelo, like you said, we'll continue actually in the next mathematics lesson and we're looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, from fives, please do not go anywhere. I will be right back with English language with Winnie Lamini. We'll be right back after this. Bonana, we are in case of that last of all. Okay, Maggie. Tabo seventy cents. I'm going to go seventy seven dollars. Then you can meet it. Um, Shaba must know us. What's that? That I could take the um, Shaba was so good at Gangu. Who made a tanta city case and Jarong and Zip on a man lamb was cut less than twenty seconds. Jango was food is a teach. Connock to a sugar boom hole and a macro and a lavanga. Tabo. The little sister of Pila Shi, whom two of the Tanta Utikes and Sipo and in a Mandila Shobili Sikatsis and Ganga twenty seconds. Mauto Gula, Maukat Abu Seventies of Umtoi, Maukat Abu Sensa Tiluan. No Maukat Abu Shinjal Nabuge. Who made a foot session the Emito in a Tinza or Sibu, Donga Lugula and Makiwan. Sanbonani. Sao po ile bab. Lumshasta ovaga bandi ngesi for COVID-19. 
COVID-19 sifo le sibangwa lituwane le corona. Le sifo senjulu sega ngekuti emate la puma imlonye nwa lo naso na kakoshela no makuluma. Awe le tinfen le tiglion zao. Pese loyo lo naso utinza leto tinfo nge tanta apinza tinze mesho impumulo nome umlom. Tinze la geteku ngepisa matuba egutupole le sifo se COVID-19 noma egusanzisa. Ungalanzela na tinyatero. Keza tanda ngen sipo na mandla shobile noma usebendise isanitizer. Simula noma ukwelelele nge kazi kwe ngoza lo ikobile, nome use... Welcome back to our viewers. This is Eswatini TV and this is Home Study that you are still tuned into. I am Noa Zilamini and we are doing Form 5 English Language. Already with me is the Form 5 teacher, Mrs. Winnie Lezlamini. Also joining me in the studio is our sign language interpreter, Nombu Melelo Hadebe. How are you doing today, Winnie? I'm very well, Nagwazi. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. We're doing discursive writing. Of right. course. Of All course. right. Thank you for that. Uh, without wasting any time, Awinile, can we please start your lesson? Thank you very much, Nogwazi. Uh, you're welcome, all my dear Form 5s. Today we are doing discursive writing. As you can remember, that last uh, the other time I was here, we were doing argumentative writing. So I want us to bring together those types of writings so that you can be able to see the difference. So our take off point is, what is discursive writing? Or how can you define discursive writing? So discursive writing requires, is an essay that requires a presentation of a balanced and an objective analysis of both sides of an issue. I will repeat that. It is a presentation or an essay that requires a presentation of a balanced Dear Lena, please note that it is a balanced, it is an objective analysis of both sides of the topic. I would say now, remember last time with the argumentative, we said it is your what? Your side, your personal side about the topic. The difference now is discursive writing, you are presenting now an analysis for both sides of the topic. If I were to simplify, I would say you look at the what? The pros and the cons about the what? The topic or the merits or the demerit and the demerits rather about the topic. So that is how we, in a very sunset, in a very summative way, we define discursive writing. Let us move on, my dear learners. So for us to be able to see or to know what is entailed in discursive writing, I found it very imperative that I bring a comparison for you so that you can know what we're expected to do in a discursive writing, what we're expected to do probably in an argumentative task so that you don't find yourself mixing the two. So we're going to look at what a comparative table what uh, is entailed in a discursive composition and what do you do now if the essay is argumentative? So now the first thing that you need to know, my dear Form 5s, is the difference between an argumentative piece and a discursive piece lies in the structure and the purpose. The structure and the purpose will differentiate for you between a what? A discursive piece or and a what an argumentative piece so what happens therefore in a discursive piece first of all a discursive piece is informative discursive piece is informative an argumentative piece is educative and persuasive so note the difference a discursive piece is informative an argumentative piece is educative and persuasive also Another uh, 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 comparison here, a discursive piece is where you present a balanced examination of an issue. I will repeat that, dear Lena. In discursive essay writing, you present a balanced examination of the issue. 
In argumentative writing, you present a strong personal side about the issue. Number three, discursive writing, you explore the topic without a voice because we said it is what? Objective writing. In argumentative writing, it has a what? A strong voice and it defends a certain point of view. When you are discussing, you are exploring, you are analyzing the what? The topic without a voice. When we say without a voice, we mean without taking a particular stand. Whereas in argumentative writing, you have a strong voice and you defend a certain point of view. Another point, a discursive piece is objective. You present the what? The facts. You give the reader the what? The justification. In argumentative, you are mostly what? Opinionated. We want your opinion. We want your stand. We want your idea. In discursive writing, you are objective. You just give the reader or your teacher the what? The facts. And you do what? Substantiate your facts using what? Justifications. And then lastly, we can talk about the what? The discursive being written in the third point of view. Whereas when you're arguing, you will include personal pronouns like I, like you, like we, like they. Why? Because you have taken a side. When you are discussing, you use a third person point of view. The reason is it is just a presentation of facts and uh, justifications that support the facts that you are given. And I hope, my dear from fives, you can now see the difference so that you don't find yourself mixing the two. Let us move on now. The structure of a discursive essay. Like all other essays or compositions, you will have a what? An introduction. In discursive writing, the introduction you give your general statement about the topic. After giving the general statement, it could either be background information about the topic or definitions of some uh, key words that are appearing in the question. Immediately you finish that, my dear Lena, what do you do? You state there that the essay will consider both sides. If you remember what I said in argumentative writing, I said you that's where you now state that oh, you give your reader the side of your argument. In this case, you state that you are going to look at both sides of whatever you are talking about. What follows the introduction? I made an example here. You can have two or four paragraphs where you are now exploring points for the topic why do i say points for because remember i said previously you are presenting both sides of the topic so the structure is you have your introduction now you can discuss points for the topic and not just one paragraph. Remember your length of writing is approximately three pages. So you can have probably two, three or four paragraphs where you are discussing points for the topic. How is each paragraph supposed to be structured? The rules of language do not change, my dear learners. So you have your what? Your topic sentence for each paragraph and that paragraph is followed by the what the relevant what justifications and then after you've presented your points for the topic right we said you are presenting a balanced what discussion here to your reader you must therefore my dear form fives provide a transition show your marker show your teacher that I am done with points four. Now I am what? Moving towards uh, discussing points against. We need what we call 
a transition statement or a connective. That is the road map for the teacher. The teacher is able to say, my student is done discussing the points for, now my student is moving on to discuss the points against. Don't make the teacher guess what you are doing in the discussion. So now you present your what? Your transition statement. It introduces the change of direction. That is a well-structured discussion. What do you do after the transition statement? You move on to the section for points against. Even there, it's up to you how much content you plant for your essay. So you can have paragraph five, six, seven, and eight, depending also on the amount of space that you have. Also, we continue. You have your what? Your topic sentence for each paragraph. You have your relevant justification and reasons. Now, dear learners, we come to the what? To the conclusion. Remember, we're still looking at the what? At the structure, the holistic structure of a discursive piece. In the conclusion, please, my dear learners, give a careful and measured what? Uh, a conclusion take or adopt a careful and measured approach what do we mean don't sound too overtly opinionated in the conclusion you want to leave that to the what the discretion of the person who has engaged with your discussion so you draw tentative conclusions about the subject by objectively evaluating the topic so now my dear learners i want us to look at a demonstration so that we understand what i have just said we move we move on my dear from fives i want us to look at a sample discursive essay let us take for example you've been given this question homeschooling is the best learning system discuss Homeschooling is the best learning system discuss. That is just a what? A statement. Here is what I want to draw your attention to. The command word discuss. Now the examiner says, don't give your views. I want a discussion. I could have changed my dear learners this question and said, Homeschooling is the best learning system. And I would have added, what are your views? And that would have been a what? An argumentative piece. Because the command phrase says so. But now, I am saying do what? I'm saying do what? Discuss. So they want a presentation, an objective, balanced analysis about home schooling you present both sides of the topic what do you do next let's look at a sample introduction i'm going to read it to you remember what i said the introduction will have what general information and then it will state that you're going to discuss both uh, uh, angles of the what of the topic yeah here, uh, uh, here is the introduction many parents nowadays have accepted total responsibility for the education of their children at home rather than sending them to a former school institution it is now deemed to be the best learning system just like any other system homeschooling has its strengths and weaknesses so you see dear Lena, this last sentence here just like any other system Homeschooling has its what? Its strengths and its weaknesses. Immediately, the reader of your script knows or is expecting a balanced word discussion. You have launched him or her into your what? Discussion. Now we move on. You have presented your introduction. 
you move on now to the body of the discussion I said the body may take maybe three or four paragraphs. I cannot prescribe. It's up to your handwriting. It's up to what you have planned and the space that you are given. So now I am discussing points for the topic. I am giving the strengths or I am giving the positives or the merits about homeschooling. Again, I am going to read to you a sample body paragraph that talks or that markets the what? The positives about homeschooling. This is how it reads. One of the fundamental merits of homeschooling is that it enables the child's potential to be fully realized. It is because, this is because the homeschooling curriculum is designed to meet the needs of each child. This, therefore, makes the learning process pleasant as concepts can be repeated in cases of slow learning until the material has been mastered. Also, areas of excellence can be maximized and accelerated. In this way, one's unique abilities are adequately harnessed. What did I give you there? I have marketed homeschooling. I have affirmed that homeschooling is the what? Is the best learning system. I am discussing points for the topic. I am giving credit. I am uh, 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 positively talking about what? Homeschooling. There is a what? A topic sentence, my dear Lena. Yeah. There is a topic sentence that I have given you here that talks about homeschooling. So it, it explains clearly what is going on here. This is how far it goes. I've given you the what? The topic sentence. What follows now the topic sentence is what? My justification. Why am I saying uh, one of the fundamental merits of homeschooling is that it enables the child's potential to be fully realized. Anyone who's reading the discussion now wants to know how is the child's potential uh, fully realized. So you give your reasons, you give your justifications because you are what you are discussing. And what will follow therefore maybe are three more paragraphs that are still in uh, uh, discussing in the same idea, in the same line. When I mean same line, I mean you are presenting the discussion for the topic. The, uh, a discussion or points that are marketing what? Homeschooling. Just a little reminder, remember to connect your paragraphs for coherence. Moreover, in addition, again, also, you are showing your reader you are still discussing the same idea. Now we move on to the other side. Remember we said it's a balanced what? Discussion. Now you have prepared to present points against the topic. Remember my dear Lena, the what? You start with the transition statement to show the change of the discussion. Never ever forget that. What do I say now in points against the topic? Just like in any matter, there are two sides to a coin. This is my what? My transition statement. I'm preparing my reader. I've given you the what? The merits about homeschooling. And now I have presented my transition statement. Just like in any matter, there are two sides of the coin. Your teacher, they all, a reader will say, what is now the other side? You have transitioned your examiner. You have transitioned your teacher smoothly to the other what? Presentation or the other analysis. This is what I say. Homeschooling also has its fair share of weaknesses. Firstly, it presents a major lifestyle change within the family. Parents must be ready to be both teachers and administrators of the curriculum they are teaching. 
This may be challenging when combined with the many other responsibilities they already have of family management. Now I'm presenting to you, my dear Lena, the other side. So it's points for, or rather it's points against what now? School, uh, uh, um, uh, homeschooling. So what do you do? You also hear, it's not just one paragraph. You may have two or three or four paragraphs dependent on the space and your handwriting and how much you have planned so that the discussion is what it flows it is coherent the synergy in what you are saying another reminder connect them well for purposes of what of coherence i have presented now both sides of the discussion. Even though I gave you one paragraph for points for, and I've given you one paragraph for points against, and I've given you the transition statement in between. Now we move on to the what? To the conclusion. Adopt a more careful and measured what? Approach because you are discussing. We don't want to hear your voice. You want to leave it to the discretion of the reader of the text to decide. So what do I say in the conclusion without being so committal in what I am discussing? This is how it reads. As artic uh, articulated above, it is very critical that one is well knowledgeable about both the merits and demerits of homeschooling before making this life-changing decision for their children. It is not committal. I did not say anything that is personal, but I am leaving it to you as my teacher or my reader or my marker to decide which side. So that's what we mean when we say, try to be more, take a measured approach, try to be more careful so that you don't find yourself leaning too much into the what into the argumentative side so here it is dear learners remember it's a balanced what way of writing and it is what it is objective it is voiceless that is what you are presenting you present what facts about the topic and for each fact you do what you give your justifications because you are discussing so that whosoever is reading is able to know the good side about the topic to know the bad side of the topic and then at the end of uh reading whatever you have written the person can take a what a, de a, a decision so that's what we do my dear form fives when we are discussing and i hope today's lesson has also assisted you to form a demarcation in your mind how is it different from a what an argumentative piece thank you very much my dear form fives we're going to see each other in the next lesson when i come back thank you very much Winile, for that and we are looking forward to seeing you again when you come back Thank you very much, Nawazi. <laughs> All right. Well. Thank you very much. Viewers, please do not go anywhere. Lerato and myself will be right back after this. Wash hands now. Wash hands now. Wash hands now. Wash hands now. Hand washing is one of the best ways to keep from getting sick and staying healthy all year long. Labaneng. Labangen while Kiwane le Corona. Bava me kupa ne tim powder tinga see to letimatima. Jenga bushung bem pimbo. Kupatfa in logo. Kushisa na kubanza. Kukwashila logo mile. Kupefumula galukuni. Kanye na gutsinwa. Gapakula banya kupa matima. Njoba le litriwane. Lisha sela ema pap. Nesi katu umtimba urana lo litriwane. Wakaka emandi la tola ema pashini. Ema papu ge ama tola emandi. Agupe fumlegi. Logu ge, kubanga tingi namba leti nengi. 
ukuthi kweshisa kulabanye kuyasita ekunciphiseni kwanza kwesifo i-COVID-19. Hlala ekhaya ungahambi. Eswatini sibambisene kulwa nekwanza kuligciwane le-corona. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, where have you been? We are done with everything, guys. Where have you been? Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed your lessons because um, today's lessons were very interesting. Nogazi, how was your day today? My day was awesome. Thank you very much. How was yours? It was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, can you please give our viewers tomorrow's timetable? All right, grade sevens, form threes, and form fives. This is what your timetable looks like tomorrow. From 2, 2 p.m. until 2.30 p.m. we have grade 7, I mean, sorry, grade 7 in science, sorry about that. Then from 2.30 p.m. until 3.08 p.m. we have mathematics for form 3. From 3.08 p.m. until 3.45 p.m. we have Siswati for form 3. From 3.45 p.m. until 4.25 p.m. we have Siswati again for form 5. And then the last subject for the day is biology from 4.25 until 5 p.m. That will be the last subject for the day. Please remind our viewers about our social media platforms, Lerato. Well, we have YouTube and Facebook where we are live from 2 p.m. to um, 5 p.m. So if you've missed any episodes, do not worry, guys. You can go on our Eswatini TV page on YouTube and you will be able to find any lessons that you guys have missed. Yes, that is very true. And just to remind you viewers back at home that you can subscribe on our YouTube channel to get any notifications about when we are live. And also to remind you about our WhatsApp line that you can use if you have any questions. Now that's it for today. We will see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe and stay at home. Goodbye and God bless from me, my, from myself <laughs> and Lerato actually. Bye. Bye.